What are we doing with Northwestern's futures with Fitzgerald gone? That's a good question. I can tell you what did happen and what I took a part in. I mean, we went ahead and myself and others went under three and a half wins. Uh, now it's three, and even some spots are two and a half. Wow. It doesn't look like it's going to be a good season. They weren't, it hasn't been a good season the last two years, and it's not going to get any better. So we saw, definitely saw, and look, is the head coach worth a win? I'm not sure if that's the regard. I just think that the reason I bet it wasn't just the loss of Pat Fitzgerald. It's more that we might have some significant locker room issues with this program. So let's go ahead and take under three and a half. And I would tell the market as far as the Rutgers game go from like four and a half up to six and a half, seven. Right. I know you're big on recruiting and like, like, you know, going forward. I, I saw they just lost, what, a, another offensive lineman, like a four-star kid. What do you think the ramifications are? Because they've lost a lot of commits as well, right? Yeah, they have. I mean, I recruiting is weird. It's all, you know, I mean, it's never as bad as it seems. It's never as good as it seems unless you're Georgia or Alabama or the Buckeyes as far as at the top. So it, it'll be really dependent on, on who they end up hiring. But the problem is at a place like Northern West, it's tough to get transfers in there because they did their credits don't transfer over. So it's, this is going to be, uh, it's not going to be an easy quick fix. So if you lose a recruiting class, it's not like you can be Colorado and over roster in one year. Brad Powers, Brad Powers sports.com at Brad Powers seven up on Twitter. He's a professional gambler. He's in a lot of these contests is uh, showing out really well, especially uh, with our friend, Tony Miller in the golden nugget contest over the years. All right, another coach is affected. Four games, not the whole season, four games for Jim Harbaugh. It's not exactly a murder. You know, I'm going to take that back. They play Rutgers and UNLV, so I'm very interested in that game. But uh, has there been movement in those first four games with Harbaugh out? But if I'm correct, Harbaugh can actually coach the whole week and he can't be there on game day. Is that right? Yeah, that's how I interpreted it. Uh, just can't be there. Game day. He'll still be around the team, just can't be there during the game. Doesn't impact the win total because you're talking about Michigan being a four touchdown plus favorite in, in their first four games all at home all against the Mayor Cans. No disrespect to UNLV or Rutgers. Yeah, you know, you're on the matter, but compared to what Michigan's at, they're tomato cans. Well, we did see some movement, and I agree with it. I took part of it. Yeah. Uh, week one, uh, Michigan was laying, you know, 35 and a half, 36. I think even 36 and a half in some spots. Went and took East Carolina there. It wasn't just hardball, but there's been rumors that other coaches, including the OC, might be suspended for that particular game. So if you combo hardball and the OC, I got a question, who the heck's calling plays for that game? And I don't want to be laying, you know, five touchdowns in that situation. Would you do any spec betting on, you know, it's early with Minnesota and P.J. Fleck, or you just can't take chances like that until you see something actually happen to them? That's a good question. I did probably overreacted, uh, took a little – I had already been a very positive uh, position in my portfolio over when I bet him against Nebraska. So I did buy back about 25, 30% uh, week one and also under when total at a different number. So just in case that it does go sideways, because it can, I mean, in today's you know 24 hour news cycle, I, I did play a little bit back, but I, I still relatively, I don't think at least right now, it's not going to end up being a Northwestern situation. Okay. Brad Powers with us. Uh, William Hill has some combo NFL teams versus college football teams with regular season win totals. I don't know if you've looked at these, but I wanted to throw them your way. Ohio State against the Bills. Buffalo straight up on regular season wins is minus 150. Ooh, uh, I am going to go Bills. I'm going to lean Bills on that one. Are we confident that Ohio State's going to be all settled at quarterback the entire season? Yeah, I'm not sure on that. I mean, obviously, they've had tremendous quarterback play the last five, six years. I, I think it's not, it's not unreasonable to say they're going to have the worst quarterback play in five-plus years this season. And then on top of it, I mean, you got question marks for the two tackle positions on that offensive line. However, uh, who can hand the ball off to Javion Anderson, Mike Williams? You can still throw the football to the best one in the country and Marvin Harrison Jr. So uh, it's you know not as doom and gloom as it was people think. My favorite bet, is, even though I got to lay the highest price here uh, amongst the six, is Michigan more wins regular season minus yeah. one sixty over the Lions. I that's the only bet that I made in that, that market. So you're onto something there. I, I that's the bet I made was Michigan over the Lions. 
I mean, what are you trying to speculate here? Like Michigan's going to finish with how many wins and what do the Lions have to get to to be competitive? Well, I mean, Michigan, I mean, believe it or not, I mean, first time in a while, they're going to be favored against the Buckeyes. And the only other game where they're less than a, you know, a single-digit favorite would be on the road against Penn State. And even then, they're going to be a slight favorite. So they're going to be favored not 12 games. Does that equate to 12-0? No. But, I mean, if I had to bet their win total, I'm going over 10.5. So I think it's an 11-1 football team. I don't see 11 wins for the Lions this year. So, yeah, that was one I, I, I didn't I didn't like 160. But, uh, you know, I laid 120 in, in that market. All right. So there's also so there's FSU and the Dolphins. Florida State's a dollar forty favorite there, and I I kind of did state as a whole and tying in the SEC because I feel like Clemson is being somewhat forgotten in the narrative coming into the college football season. Brad, but what do you feel? I think Florida State's really legit. Uh, I, I I honestly believe that. I thought they were legit last year. They're in the top ten of my power ranks. They're in the top ten of my power ranks right now. With that being said, they have two really tough games. LSU, they're an underdog week one. And they also, in the month of September, have to go to Clemson, uh, a, a game where they're also going to be an underdog. So my question is, they don't, that, that plays off the mark. They lose a couple of tough games. You have all these preseason high expectations for Florida State. And you suddenly have two losses in the month of September and you're on a national title picture. How does that team react to that? Uh, I, you know, my gut says they won't react well. And you still got Miami and Florida, and games like that still left on the schedule. So, uh, uh, right now, my gut tells me I would rather have the Dolphins against Florida State in that matchup. Here's another one I love. Cardinals against Colorado football. Cardinals minus one and a half wins. Ooh. Oh, that's a tough one. I, I would not bet it. I, I just think Colorado's kind of an enigma. I have that. Colorado win totals at much different numbers. I have not touched it at the current three and a half because I can't see them winning four games. Uh, but again, I can also see them going one and 11. That's just too much of an enigma for me to take part of. And you think the Arizona Cardinals could be dreadful? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I don't believe in tanking, but when you got to, you know, you got a guy like Caleb Williams who people think is a generational type count. I even like Drake May. I, I could see teams being less optimal when it comes to preparation this year. Last one, head-to-head wins NFL against college football. We got like 30 seconds. Uh, USC is minus 130 over the LA Chargers. Oh, that's a tough one. I think that's probably appropriately priced. I, I can tell you what I bet. I have, I have bet USC over. I am actually buying USC this year. I think they are the first legitimate playoff contender out of the Pac-12 in six years.